Okay, so I thought it would be fun to try doing a spire jump um, tutorial. Like if you've ever played um, Assassin's Creed or like Sly Cooper, they have the ability to like, or like Infamous, they have the ability to find like a perch point and like a pole or something and they have the ability to sort of attach to it. I think it'll be fun to show you guys how to do it. So what we're going to do first is we are going to start out with a pole and we have a puppet that is just kind of one that I'm sort of messing around with. It has a bunch of cool like kind of features and that sort of thing. It's ground pound. It's pretty cool. Um, so I thought it would make sense to give it a perch jump ability. Uh, so to start out, you're going to want a microchip. And this is just going to contain all of the logic for the uh, perch balance. So I'm just going to call it um, perch balance. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, basically the way this works is it takes the puppet and it gets it to sort of stick to a point with a tag on it. Um, so before we do that, I'm just gonna make sure the perch, we can actually reach it. Yeah, there we go. So, can you jump on it? Yeah, yeah, ah, there we go, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> okay, so, what we're gonna do is put a tag on this perch and this will basically make it so the puppet can stick onto the perch. So, um, generally try to get it it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage, but try to get it um, about as close as possible. Um, and depending on how you want to do it, um, orientation might be important, so you might want to keep that in mind. So I think that's pretty well centered. So let's call this one perch. There we go. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to do a few things. The first thing we're going to want is a state machine. Um, a state machine basically determines whether or not something is true. If something is true, then it puts the puppet into a particular sort of like um, move or whatever. Um, it activates a function. So there's a whole bunch of different ways we're gonna do, we can do this. I'm just going to use counter. First thing we're going to do is animate the pose. Um, so, let's just, yeah, I give him a really crazy, like, stinky leg, there we go, Whoa, check him out, <laughs> he's practically like a ninja right now, check it out, look at him, look at him go, um, just for reference, this will work with, like, the platforming puppet, or the, uh, normal puppet, doesn't really matter, um, okay, so, we've got our pose, great, um, there's gonna be another thing we're going to need to do, um, this is more a uh, preference. Um, we're going to want to disable the procedural animations and any other animations you may have um, in the puppet. So I'm just going to do that by turning off this logic here. Um, and the reason we're doing this is so that while he's balancing on the perch, uh, basically while, while he's balancing on the perch, we don't want him to like air walk or anything like that, we want them to only stay in the pose. So the easiest way to do that is to disable the procedural um, animations and any other kind of like, sort of like uh, functions that we got. Um, so I might also deactivate the sliding behavior, uh, follow behavior, um, and poses, this is all pretty much all the basic stuff we have on the puppet. I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to be extra precise, one thing I like to do that this is um, completely optional, I like to deactivate controls. Um, that way, um, uh, that way I can be extra sure that I am not going to allow the player to like move or something like that. Anyway, we've got our pose. 
the screen and we've got our disable functions, which is going to be red. Um, great, so that will basically set it up so that when Popper lands on the perch, they'll be set up like that. There's a few more things we want to do. We want to make it so that the puppet actually moves to the tag. What we're basically going to use for that is a follower. Um, and we probably want it to be... Um, hmm. Yeah, okay, so this is another thing that really depends. Um, if, if you want it to kind of be like instant, you might want it to be max speed. But I found that to be a bit jerky. So... I'm just gonna go with like a hundred for now. Nothing super fast. Um, just 90 strength, uh, 100 dampening. Um, this is basically gonna move to the perch. Uh, yep, let's just make sure that it's lined up with his feet, like so. Um, Uh, at this stage, you may also want to adjust the tag on the perch, just so that it's right. See if I can get that. If the imp drift does not do me in, as it has many times before. Alright, so. Follower is following perch. Next thing we want to do is we pro... Hmm. Yeah, so we don't want, uh, like, the puppet to, like, kind of get confused as to which one it should follow. So what we're going to do is we're going to limit the maximum distance to something that is uh, relatively close. Uh, like so. Um, and then... We are going to want to sort of like um, activate this somehow because if we do it now, nothing's happening. Um, so the easiest way to do that is to take this uh, trigger zone and make sure it is not super big and just have it detect the perch tag. Make sure it doesn't activate the um, Puppets stage one sort of thing. <clears throat> yep, and we basically just lines up with the puppet's feet like so. We will have it activate like so. Yep. So when we go into play mode, it should work. Whoa, there he goes! Whoa! Um, so you can't see it, but I'm moving, I'm pressing X, all that kind of stuff, and nothing's happening. Oh no, he's stuck. All right, so how do we get rid of that? Um, basically, the way we can get rid of that is we can make it so that if he presses the X button, then he will detach. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. I'm just going to put down, like, a wireless control sensor. You can use, like... Um, your regular one, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. So, basically now, what should happen is, he jumps onto the perch, yay, he's stuck. And then if we press X, he detaches. But the way it works is not that great. He kind of like, sort of drops a little bit, and then he's sort of like, kind of lame. We want to give him like a cool kind of like jump. Or maybe you don't, doesn't really matter. Um, the way you do that is pretty simple. Um, you can use a signal manipulator, plug it into the counter, and then we can take this um, pulse it off, um, put this pulse it off uh, setting. Basically what this does is signal goes through, um, Signal manipulator doesn't actually activate until the pulse, the, the signal sort of stops going through all the way. So that's pretty basic. Um, next thing we will do is use a force applier. This is going to give us our cool jumping ability. 
and we're going to want to make sure it only affects the player. So go into the labels and make sure it's only detect detecting the player um, label. The platformer puppet by default is labeled friend, but if you're using the regular puppet, then um, you'll want to go into the puppet. Um, just select it and then select friend like so. Um, you can also kind of just go into the regular puppet logic and select friend. There we go. Um, yeah. So we want to set the strength uh, to be a little bit high, not super high. In fact, I think that might already be high, uh, too high to be honest. Um, just make sure that it's pointing up so that he actually jumps. And that should work. Sorry, you got the thing in the way. It's like, there we go. And then he jumps off. Whoa! Check him out. He's a cool ninja dude. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Alright. So, the next thing we need to check is to make sure that there's not any sort of like conflicting uh, issues with this. No. Nope. Works pretty well. Hey. Nice. Alright, so that's working. Um. So we can get like a cool kind of like dance going on. What? What? Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> it's a little uh, tricky to sort of like land on them. Um, that can be fixed pretty easily. All you really need to do is wait, put it. Here we go. Just up the size of the trigger zone. It'll be way easier. Uh, make sure that. You don't kind of like put them too close together because otherwise that will happen. So we might actually lower the size of this trigger zone just a tiny bit. Um, let me see if that works. Nope. So this is mostly fine tuning. Uh, yep. Just lower that. So should be a bit easier now. So just tinker with it a little bit and you'll get it. Um, so it kind of like floats a little bit. You see that like floating? So that's essentially caused by like um, the follower essentially. We may want to make it a bit faster so we might go 500. And we might also up the strength to 100. It might not have been a good call to limit the strength. You can see that's a bit... Uh, that's alright actually, I think that's okay. Um, cool. So that's almost done. The only thing that we need to do now is give it like uh, some sound effects. So... Let's see what we've got. Hmm. Yeah, we'll give it that kind of like Weird one, like so. If you want the um, sound effect to play when he lands on it, you just kind of hook it up to the counter, like so. Do do do. Boom. It's like done. Whoa. All right. Let's give him one when he jumps up. Oh, this one's nice and gross. Let's use that one. Okay. Ah. Oh. All right. There we go. Um, so it should work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So he's so stuck to it that it sounds like he's uh, stepping on jelly or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much how you do a spy drum. I hope it uh, helps you make some cool um, Sly Cooper or Assassin's Creed style games. Uh, Whatever you want, really. See you next time.